This is the Synology DS218 Play. It is a budget NAS or network attached storage for people who don't quite know. And uh, it's fairly impressive for its price point. Features a 64-bit uh, Realtek quad-core running, I think about 1.0, 1.3 gigahertz. So certainly a low power chip there. Uses one gigabyte of RAM. And it's kind of main headline feature, the, the thing that they specifically asked me to kind of test and check out is the 4K encoding and transcoding feature built into the NAS. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the actual hardware itself, do a bit of a tour. So on the front, you have the standard notification LEDs as well as the power button. On the back, you have obviously the fan exhaust as well as gigabit ethernet, two USB 3 ports and the DC in. On both sides of the NAS, you have a Synology logo, which actually acts as a bit of ventilation. And I just want to mention that the uh, NAS itself uses a matte plastic, which is very nice to see. I love seeing matte plastic on products, but uh, the only thing is that this, uh, the finish on it just feels very strange and fairly cheap kind of plastic feeling. So just put that one in mind. It doesn't feel like the most high quality NAS in the world. It also feels incredibly light, especially without drives in it. So that's, uh, that may allude to uh, the overall sort of feel of the, the premiumness or I suppose lack thereof from this NAS. Installing a drive or drives in this as it's a two bay NAS is fairly simple. You basically just pull the front of the housing off on the sort of, I suppose, depending how you're looking at it, left hand side. There's no screws on the rear side, so you just pull it off and then you place your drives in, make sure they're connected and install two screws on either side. And that's about it. It doesn't look like they've included any brackets for two and a half inch drives here. So it looks like it's only three and a half inch drives will be available for this NAS. Getting the NAS set up was actually pretty easy. You do have to go through the setup process and there is no obviously display on this NAS. So you will have to go to your router to find out what IP address the NAS is set to is that your router will automatically assign an IP address for it. Uh, in my case, it was 192.168.1.12. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a dynamic address. It's not uh, set up in any static manner. I'd also mention that the setup process is really simple, but they do really heavily push you to create an online Synology account so you can access the online features of the NAS. I personally went with an offline one just for the testing purposes, but uh, it is a fairly heavy kind of push towards the online, although there's a very small, very kind of hidden skip this step button uh, below the sort of login button down the bottom. Once you've set up the NAS, you can take a look at the standard user interface. This is fairly similar to a lot of the other NASs that you will see, including QNAP and Asus Tor and stuff like that. So this is fairly decent. The app center itself is uh, pretty nice to have a lot of Synology standard or Synology built apps, as well as a couple of third party ones, including stuff like WordPress, PHP, my admin, PHP itself, Python, not sort of stuff. So if you do want to run it as a slightly small business NAS, you can do, although it does look like they're really kind of positioning positioning this one as more of a home user NAS. And I think the, there's a bit of a almost a conflict of interest here as they seem to have not included Plex Media Server, which is obviously a very common and very popular uh, media streaming service, something that I personally use on my QNAP NAS downstairs. Uh, and that is uh, kind of a surprising one, but it looks like it's because their video station app basically has fairly similar functionality, of course, just, uh, you know, Synology rather than Plex. It'd be really nice to see them include Plex as one of the downloadable apps. It does look like you can manually install it if you want, as like all the other NASes, this is running a custom distribution of Linux. So you should be able to install Plex, no problem. But nonetheless, it is a little bit strange that they seem to have omitted one of the more popular apps a lot of people use on their, uh, you know, sort of NAS device. So you can look here on the rest of the UI. The settings are quite different to a lot of the other NAS, NAS UIs that I've used in that a lot of the settings are kind of buried in sub tabbed menus. So even if you go to the info menu, for example, you'll see the info menu. And then along the top of that window, you'll see separate sub menus that aren't listed in the sidebar anywhere. You can expand the info menu sub menu to then see the rest of them. You have to go to that page to then see what options are available. So it does make changing settings a little bit more difficult as things aren't quite that obvious. The file manager was fairly easy to use. And while uh, the upload speed was fairly minimal and I was kind of surprised by this. In fact, a large file that I was using to test the, this NAS with for the transcoding that I'll talk about in a second was actually reaching uh, no more than about 20 megabytes per second, which was surprising considering that I'm running on a full gigabit network here. And that's something that I use on a regular basis, copying footage from my NAS to my PC. So I was kind of surprised by that one. Now, as I mentioned, the NAS does have the 4K video transcoding as a feature on the video station. And that's something that they actually have on the front of the box and that sort of stuff. So it's kind of a highly rated feature for them. Now, of course, 
I did test this out. So the way that you do this is you obviously upload the, the files you want to transcode to the NAS itself. You then go to the video station uh, application and manually add a new folder. So you can do this by either going to an existing folder or creating a new sort of subcategory and then going to that one and adding a new folder in there and then it automatically uh, sort of adds the, the files that are in that folder. It was a little bit of a more complicated process than I thought it would be. You then use the sub menu uh, on the sort of thumbnail of each uh, icon to be able to uh, offline transcode it. You can set between original quality, high, medium, and low, and default audio track. Uh, it will only render to MP4, so bear that one in mind, and it should only render to the original quality. So if you upload a 1080p file, it will export as 1080p. If you upload a 4K file, it will export as 4K. Now I tested this with I tested this with a 1080p file to start with, and the overall uh, result was pretty decent. There was basically no file size changes. I set it to original file size, and there was basically no quality difference either. With the 4K file that I uh, rendered, however, there's actually significant issues with it. There's something that I tested out and it just seems to be an issue with either this file or with the, the just how the NAS handles it. But uh, to start off, the file was uh, corrupted for the first few uh, actual images or the, the first few frames of the, the video. And then the last frame of the video is also a full green plate. This was not in the original file and it had actually damaged or removed or dam uh, you know destroyed some of the frames in that video so it's not something that I re necessarily recommend as the perfect solution also when I was encoding the uh, 4k file the original uh, you know file format original quality wasn't an option here so even if you just want to be able to change like dot mall 4k files from your camera to mp4 files for example uh, that's uh, the original file uh, format or the original quality option wasn't available there so what do I think of the NAS well for its price point it's not too bad the UI seems a little bit more complicated than it really should be and the video transcoding feature did have quite a few issues that I'd hopefully be able able to see resolved in some software updates. Of course, it also isn't as fast as my Ryzen 7 PC that I do the, the rendering for the files that I'm currently recording on uh, to be able to sort of lower that, that file size out. And it's obviously not as granular in the control that you can have there too. So this is basically just original resolution and then you can change from original quality, high, medium and low, and there's no descriptor as to what high, medium, low is at all. So. Just with that one in mind that it is a little bit of a more limited thing. It also doesn't seem to do automatic video transcoding like Plex does, where if you import a video file, it will automatically, tr automatically transcode it so that it is available in multiple variants for you know your, your phone or your tablet or your desktop or anything like that. So bear that one in mind too. Moving on to the scoring, for me, this is gonna be a 3.5. It is above average, but it's not the best in the world. When it comes to performance, again, similar sort of points uh, with a four here. And in terms of functionality, I'm gonna go with a 3.5 for the limited drive supports and the sort of semi-complicated UI. When it comes to the styling, it's a decent enough styling, so I'm gonna go with a four and a Texan Ruby score of a four with a silver award. It's an impressive enough NAS and for a budget price point, it does a decent enough job, but the overall hardware side of things is a little bit uh, limited just in the, the you know quad-core Realtek 1 point something gigahertz chip and of course only one gig of RAM. The actual plastic feel is a little bit uh, kind of a bit of a detractor as well and uh, yeah, a little bit of a complicated UI. So some of these things can definitely be improved for future NASs uh, or even just this NAS for some software updates. Uh, but yeah, I think that's that's pretty much that. If you'd like to see any more about this NAS or check out the price when and where you watch this, take a look at the link in the description down below. If you want to support me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday basis, then feel free to take a look at the Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links in the description down below. Or if you want to support me directly, there is a Patreon link down below too where you can more directly support me and get some rewards and stuff like that too. There will be some other videos over here for you to check out. Of course, if you're new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button too. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed the video and found it uh, useful and informative. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all in the next video.